Howdy, howdy, Chris here, and welcome back to Garage Noise. On last week's episode, we started the repairs on the Chevy Colorado. Now, this had a badly damaged fender and door, so we started the repairs by pulling out that damage with our G90E. We got the metal nice and straight, and then we applied some body filler to correct those imperfections in that metal. Through a series of different blocking techniques, we were able to block sand this body filler straight and smooth and apply two coats of 2K urethane primer. Today we'll be going over the next step in this process and that is preparing our repair for paint and clear coat. Before we start the process of preparing the primer for paint, I wanna go ahead and prep out these blend areas. For that, I'm gonna use some 600 grit sandpaper on an orbital sander. I like to use 600 grit sandpaper because it's aggressive enough to promote adhesion, but it's not so aggressive it's going to leave deep sand scratches underneath your paint. This does not have to be done with an orbital sander. You can do all of this by hand. In fact, for the small areas and the edges, I'm going to do most of those areas with 600 grit sandpaper by hand. You can see the texture of the clear coat getting smoothed out. So right here, I've sanded out all the texture. Right here, you can see just because of the way the dust lays on there, you can see the texture of the clear coat. So if at all possible, you wanna remove that texture because you wanna start out with a smooth surface. Now, I wouldn't go crazy trying to remove it because then you could break through. There's a body line right close to this. So I'm not gonna be too crazy and try and get that absolutely smooth at all costs because I don't wanna burn through that paint. So let's go ahead and sand the rest of this and then we'll move on to the next step. Here's a little tip if you're using a DA to sand a contour in your panel. So I'm using an interface pad and these are great because they're a soft foam pad that I can roll over the contours without creating a flat area in that panel. So if you don't use an interface pad and you're not moving with the contours of the panel, you can create flat spots in those contours and those can show up underneath your paint and your clear coat. If you're worried about creating flat spots, you can always do it by hand with a soft foam pad. Okay, so now that Darius has these panels prepped out, we're gonna go ahead and block sand this primer. I'm gonna put a guide coat on it first so we can easily identify our high and low areas. If there are any, any scratches that we might have missed, this will give us a good idea of when this primer is ready. So I am going to start with 320 grit sandpaper and then we'll move on to 600. You don't want to get too aggressive with your sandpaper choice when you're blocking out primer. I like to stick with 320 grit sandpaper. I don't go any coarser than a 320 grit scratch over primer. When sanding, you want to keep your block flat and block in an X or crosshatch pattern. I'm not putting in a lot of pressure, just even letting this block glide over the panel. Obviously we can't go in this contour with this block, so we're just getting the flat areas with this block. Now some of these small areas we're gonna have to get by hand with a different style block. But I am able to get this edge by just simply turning my block. Get this section here. Now we're gonna to switch to the soft flexible block for the contours on this fender. Now I can shape this block to match up with this fender. We've broken through here into body filler now. I'm not gonna stop here because there's a little bit of a wave there. I'm gonna continue blocking that and we'll block that filler down, and then we'll put another coat of, a thin coat of primer to be able to finish sand it before we paint. Now I'm just gonna finish sanding this in this groove, just clean up these edges, make sure there's nothing irregular on these edges. 
I just want to make sure they're nice and uniform before we apply our finish coat of primer. Okay, let's wash and evaluate it. We broke through our primer. Not ideal in this situation. We don't really want to break through our primer. We would love everything to just block sand out and be totally smooth and not have to add another coat of primer. You know, that would be ideal, but sometimes this happens. This is the first time we've blocked this with primer. We've broken through a few areas here, right in here. It is now straight. There's no waves in it, but we need to put another coat of primer over this. I'm gonna, it's gonna be a thin coat because it's all been sanded with 320. There's no need to do any kind of build. We don't want multiple heavy build coats of primer because we don't wanna do all that block sanding. Basically, we're gonna apply a primer surfacer where you use U-pull primer and we'll mix it four to one to one. So four parts primer, one part activator, and then one part reducer that's gonna thin it out so it's just a primer surfacer. And then we can do our, just our finished sanding with 600 and this will be ready to paint. When I'm masking off for primer, I don't want a hard edge of primer, so I've got uh, it taped down here. I fold it in half before I apply it. Now, when I end my primer here, if a little overspray gets underneath that, that's okay. We'll sand that out. I'll put another piece of paper here so we don't get any overspray on the rest of this fender. And we're gonna keep our air pressure relatively low so we don't have a lot of primer overspray. So we've got this masked off. I'm not too concerned about overspray here because we're blending this and painting it and we'll sand out any light overspray. Darius went ahead and mixed up some U-pull primer surfacer. Let's go ahead and lay that on. Okay, for primer, we've set our air pressure at about 12. We may bump that up a little bit. Our fluid volume is two turns out from closed and our fan pattern is narrowed back a little bit from wide open. But we're gonna control the flow of our primer and the overspray by our trigger. We're not gonna pull this trigger all the way. Very little overspray. And I just decided to put a coat on this whole repair area. And basically that's all we need right there. Now Darius and I are masking off the panels that we're painting. So we tape off the perimeter of those panels and then we'll put plastic over the entire truck. We'll cut out the areas that we'll be painting and then we'll tape that plastic down to the truck so we don't have any overspray. Off camera, we went ahead and prepped out our primer for paint by lightly sanding it with 600 grit sandpaper. We then washed it with isopropyl alcohol and a wax and grease remover. This is going to remove any contaminants that were left behind from the sanding. Be sure to check out the next episode when I share with you how you can paint your vehicle in your garage with less air, less overspray, and a bunch of material savings. So don't miss it. Subscribe now and click that bell so you don't miss anything. I appreciate each and every one of you watching, and we'll see you on the next episode of Garage Noise.